again. Beautiful fall day in Arkansas today. I just love it. Unfortunately, at 6 o'clock tonight, I have to go to work and uh, work all night until 6 o'clock Sunday morning. But such is life uh, in the taxpayer fast lane. Anyway, I thought I'd go over the last uh, video we had showed Glenn using his antenna analyzer. I'm not sure that we made things quite as clear as we should have uh, as to what exactly he was doing. Now you understood that he was injecting a signal into the antenna. A very low power signal because if it was too much power it might interfere with a ham radio operator out there trying to speak with another ham. And uh, so actually what he was doing was transmitting. He was transmitting a very low power signal to see what kind of bounce back he would get or standing wave ratio as they call it. And he did it on different frequencies. Uh, my uh, Heath kit is capable of uh, the 10 meter band, 15 meter band, the 20 meter band, the 40 meter band, and the 80, 80 meter band, although uh, Glenn kept referring to it as the 75 meter. Uh, old hams, uh, when it first came out, it was the 75 meter band, and then they extended it on up to the 80 meter band. Uh, the way Glenn explained that to me was he looks at uh, from 75 to 80 as the uh, Morse code, the CW uh, part of the band. So he's still in the habit of referring to the to the 75 meter band, but we call it the 80 meter band today. So what he was doing, uh, he wanted to check since my radio has to to do the 10 meter, 15, 20, 40, and 80 meter bands. He wanted to check the frequency, <coughs> I mean the uh, standing wave ratio at each one of those frequency ranges. Uh, for instance, the uh, 10 meter band is between 28 and 29.7 megacycles. And he tested it at 28.5, which is, you know, right in the middle. And he did that for each one of the bands. Uh, 15 meter is uh, 21 to 21.45 megacycles. He tested it at 21.3. And then the 20 meter band is 14 to 14.350 megacycles. He tested it at 14.25. Well, you know, we're, we're pretty much in the middle of each of these bands. Uh, the last two were a uh, 40 meter band, which I plan to use a lot, uh, 7 to 7.3 megacycles. He tested it at 7.2. And the 80 meter band, 3.5 to 4.0 megacycles. He tested it at 3.9. Now, he got a lot of uh, standing wave ratio, more than he should have. So, what he was doing with his little tuning dial was going above and beyond. I mean, above and, and below the frequency that he was testing at to see where, at what point, whether it was below or above, that the standing wave ratio needle would start dropping from high to low. So that's what he was doing. And then he, uh, he said he, when he tested it on uh, 3.9 megacycles, which was the 80 meter band, that's when he said, you know, geez, I had to go way above on this one or way below on that one. Uh, which tells me your antenna was too long. So that's what he's going to do again. He's going to come back. He's going to go through these bands one more time. He's going to check it at each one of these frequencies. Uh, 3.9, 7.2, 14.25, 21.3, and 28.5. Now me, I, you know, being a new ham, I've got to look at a piece of paper. But those old hams, they got that stuff memorized. You know, they know exactly what band corresponds to which frequency. I have a tough time with it, you know. So that's it. Until Glenn gets back here, uh, I think I'll make this a... Uh, a, a, a separate video from all the rest and we'll pick up on the next video which will be probably next week or possibly the week after because Glenn has to go out of town for a week uh, for several days and uh, we'll end this video with what I've done as far as the antenna goes and the next then the next video we'll pick up uh, with Glenn uh, being here sitting again one more time in the chair with his uh, antenna analyzer until then uh, this is John well there's where we're gonna go we're gonna have to go over there and pull that uh, Pull that antenna down, shorten it up by six inches, and then uh, go over here and pull that one down out of that tree, locate it to another tree, and lop six inches off of it also. Oh boy, I better get it done now. I mean, it's not, the weather's not getting any warmer. Well, as you can see, the, the yard's beginning to get totally covered with leaves. I just love fall. Of course, I don't like sweeping off the deck. I remember when I lived up north as a kid we used to pile big leaf piles up and jump in them and everything and then eventually sweep them out to the curb and uh, set them on fire and uh, just sit there all day watch them burn down 
There'd be people doing that up and down the street. Not anymore. Those days are long gone. Okay, there's six inches. And there it is, lopped off. One end complete. Now we'll just restring it around this uh, restring it around this thimble, put it back together and get one end back up in the tree. Well, as you can see, the antenna is still on the ground. Uh, this morning's efforts to get it in that second tree limb, or that second tree way up in that area were a total miserable failure. So it's time for me to go to work. I'll have to give it another try tomorrow. Wish us luck. Well, it's the next morning. It's pretty crisp and cool out here. And my helper, commonly referred to as wifey, she thinks it's too cold to come out here and put up an antenna in a tree. No, oh, what's this world coming to? Anyway, we're going to give it the old college try one more time. Okay, we got it on the first shot. And uh, what happened was the, the fish line that I was shooting the arrow over the tree with yesterday kept breaking when I was pulling the uh, clothesline over the limbs. So we went down and got some 20 pound spider wire and that got it across there. Unfortunately I've got to lop off a, uh, a tree limb. I don't know if you can see this right here but this tree limb is interfering the the, uh, the cord is going underneath that thing and up. And I've got, I'm going to have to come over here and lop off that little baby right there. Give me a little more clearance. I don't know if you can see that clothesline rope up in there but it's right in that area there. It's really high. I was able to get it way up there okay now to cut off a tree limb i never did like that tree limb anyway okay there's the saw i'm gonna cut that tree limb off with i got a flu shot yesterday so sawing with that baby should work out that soreness and you get up on this ladder and cut away right there well i don't know if you can see that very well but right there it is that's the center of the antenna i was able to get it up uh, much higher and the feed line instead of three feet laying on the ground I now have it three feet off the ground so it's sitting at about uh, 31 feet in the air man I'll tell you what that's as high as I'm going to get it on this lot that's all there is to it 31 feet and I'll hook up the coax and then we'll wait for old Glenn to come back over and stick his analyzer on that thing the ideal setup uh, for a G5RV is that the feed line uh, would hang straight to the ground. Straight to the ground and then you hook up your coax cable and run into your radio. Well, I can't do that here because people play and mess around. We you know, mow the lawn and things like that. So I had to put it at an angle which is okay. I don't know if you can see that or not but there's a... Uh, heck, I can't even hardly see it myself. <laughs> anyway, there's, I have to angle it down to the crotch of this tree and then from there I hooked a uh, the coax cable there now later on when uh, Glenn comes over checks the uh, the SWR and we make proper adjustments if more needs to be done it, it'll swing down I, I intend to let a little slack loose on the uh, coax and have it come down just a little bit more kind of get it as straight as I can I want to get as little uh, slanted feed line as possible 